This video will teach a Blender user how to light the HDR Light Studio beer bottle. At the end of the tutorial, you will have created this rendering. This tutorial is aimed at absolute beginners and is the first in a series of tutorials that will teach you how to use HDR Light Studio with Blender. Download the Blender scene from the link in the description so you can follow along. Open the beer bottle scene file in Blender and start Cycles Interactive Rendering. I like to use a shading layout in Blender. This shows the interactive render centered at the top of the display. Go to the World Properties tab, find the HDR Light Studio section and expand it. Press the Start button to start HDR Light Studio in a connection with Blender. Your interface should look something like this. If not, go to Window, Layout, Load, Default, Blender. By default in the Window menu, the Always On Top setting is on, having a tick next to it. Turn this off. We then need to restart HDR Light Studio for this setting to take effect properly. In Blender, press the Stop button and then press the Start button again to restart HDR Light Studio. If you have two displays, place HDR Light Studio on one and Blender on the other. This is the ideal layout when using HDR Light Studio with Blender and it's the easiest to set up. But if you have a single display, this can also work well and for this tutorial, we'll be using a single display. We need to rearrange the HDR Light Studio interface to fill the screen, but also to show the Blender interactive rendering. Rearranging the interface will take a little time to do, but we only need to do this once. We will save the new layout to restore in the future when needed. OK, let's start arranging the interface. Drag it to the top left of your display. Resize it to fill the height and make it narrower. We will tear panels from the interface by dragging from their panel name. Drag the Light Properties panel and place it here and resize it. Drag the Light Preview panel and place it here and resize it. Drag the Render View Settings panel and drop it onto the Presets panel to tab it with the presets. Press the Presets tab to bring it to the front. Make the main interface narrower. Drag the Render View panel and place it here and resize it. Drag the Canvas panel and place it here. Make the main interface narrower. Move the canvas panel here and resize it. Then adjust the proportions of the light list, light controls and presets like this. To save your interface layout, go to the menu Window, Layout, Save, select Preset 1 and name the new layout My Blender Layout and press OK. Now if you ever want to restore this layout, you can go to Window, Layout, Load, User, My Blender Layout. So now we are ready to start lighting. The Light List panel lists all of the lights in the current lighting design. You can think of each light as an image layer, like you see in photo editing software. A light at the top of the list is layered over the lights beneath. By default, in a new lighting design, there is a gradient background light, so you can see your 3D model. We're going to add one of the preset HDRI maps 
as the base to our lighting design. We will find these in the presets panel. By default, the presets panel will show preset lights filtered by the studio lights tag. To display the HDRI maps, use the tags filter drop down and select HDRI Haven Int to show a selection of interior HDRI maps from the HDRI Haven website. We have saved these free HDRI maps as ready to use light presets. Double click on the hotel room preset thumbnail and the preset light is added to the lighting design. The new light is listed at the top of the light list and is selected. The HDRI can be seen on the canvas and the HDRI map is lighting the blender render. The light preview panel shows a flat view of the selected light. The settings for this light are shown on the light properties panel. The brightness of the light is adjusted using the slider or the plus and minus buttons. The large plus and minus buttons increase and decrease the brightness by one f-stop, basically doubling or halving the brightness. The blend mode for this light is over, which means it's solid and covers up what's beneath. So let's now delete the gradient background light which is not needed by right clicking on the light in the light list and choosing delete from the menu. Back to the HDRI light. The mapping of this content is planar, basically it's applied flat onto the canvas. This mapping is ideal for adding HDRI maps. To rotate the HDRI map horizontally, we need to adjust the longitude slider. Even though the image is mapped flat, it will still map over the vertical seam on the edges of the canvas correctly. Let's rotate it until we get a nice lighting effect in the bottle. I get a nice effect at about 105. You can also type that value into the field instead of using the slider. We want to take more control over the background seen behind the bottle and make it look more like a studio shot. Let's pick another preset light to do this. Use the tags drop down and select backdrop. Double click on the first thumbnail, backdrop 1. This light is an image of a grey background scoop, like a curved piece of card that is used in studio photography. It has blend mode set to over, so it covers the HDRI map, but it also has an alpha channel in the image, so some areas are transparent so the HDRI map beneath can be seen by many areas of the bottle. Let's turn down the brightness of this light to about 50 so the background is not too bright and washed out. We can turn this light on and off in the light list using the on off button. This will clearly show the before and after effect of the backdrop. You can see the bottle looks nicer with the backdrop showing. At the moment you can see that the floor looks cream coloured. This is because the lighting from the HDRI map is quite saturated and coloured. Let's reduce the saturation of the HDRI map. Select the hotel room light in the list. In the content section of the light properties, reduce the saturation value to 0.5. You can now see the floor looks whiter. We have removed the distracting amount of colour. The appearance of lights is controlled by the content settings and these settings change depending on the type of content. I think we should also reduce the brightness for the hotel room lights down to 50 as it was a little too bright and washing out the render too much on the right side of the bottle. We now have a nice base to our lighting design. Next we should add some light sources carefully positioned to improve the lighting even more. To do this we will now use HDR Light Studio's internal render view to allow us to precisely position lights using the light paint feature. Press the play button to import the blender scene into this panel. Press the import button and the scene will be exported from Blender as a temporary Alembic file just for this lighting session 
and it will be loaded into this panel. This view's purpose is to provide an interface for positioning lights on the model, whilst giving some visual feedback to help with this process. A simple shader with a diffuse colour and reflection is applied to the whole model. At the moment, the bottle is not fitting in the view. Go to the Render View Settings panel to adjust the setting for this view. Change the image height to 400 pixels, so that we can match the square image in Blender and fit the bottle into the render view. We can select the diffuse colour swatch and change the colour of the shader to a blue to give a match of sorts to the blender's view. Close the colour picker once you are happy with the colour. Now we are finished with the render view settings, select presets tab to bring it to the front ready to use again if needed. Let's add a light to bring the embossed logo on the bottle to life. Click once on the round light on the toolbar. A soft round light is added to the centre of the canvas, which is behind the bottle. Click on the area of the bottle in the render view where we want the effect of this new light. The light is then moved to reflect in that location. This is because the light paint mode by default is set to reflection in this view. The light needs to be brighter. Let's press the plus button until it's bright enough. Two f-stops is enough, making the light 400 bright. To isolate the effect of this light, let's solo it. Click on the S button next to the light in the light list. We can see that the light is creating a nice highlight around the embossed area so we can more clearly see the logo. If this is not positioned correctly, you can adjust the position either by making small adjustments on the canvas by dragging its position or click and drag on the 3D model again in the render view. If you prefer a previous position, you can use the menu Edit Undo in HDR Light Studio or use Ctrl Z. Once you have the perfect position, unsolo the light pressing the S button again so all lights are visible. You can use light paint to position lights behind the 3D model. We call this positioning method RIM. Add another round light from the toolbar. By default it will appear centered on the canvas. Let's change its size in the properties panel, making the width and height a value of 3. Solo this light. You can see the light is towards the bottom of the bottle and behind it. It's on the HDRI map that is visible behind the 3D model. Change the light paint mode to rim using the drop down. Click and drag in the render view. You can see the light is moving to be positioned on the HDRI map under your cursor behind the 3D model. Let's position the light by releasing the mouse around the centre of the bottle. Let's make the light bigger to fill the view, say a width and height of 6 by 6. Also let's change its colour to a cyan blue, which will make a more interesting background. Click on the colour swatch on the light properties content section and choose a cyan colour from the colour picker. If we unsolo the light, we can't see the effects of this rim light very well. So let's turn down the brightness of the backdrop light to 10. Now the rim light shows up better. Before continuing, let's change the light paint mode on the view back to reflection, which is the most useful mode. We have two lights in the light list with the same name. One was to highlight the embossed logo, and one was to rim light the bottle. Let's rename them to make it easier to know what they're doing. Double click on the top round light and call it rim light and press OK. Double click on the other round light and call it logo light and press OK. It makes sense to keep your lighting design well organised. Now let's add a light to the left of the bottle. Let's select softbox in the tags drop down in the presets panel. Drag and drop softbox 72 by 175 
onto the left side of the bottle on the render view. It will be positioned to reflect in the location where it was dropped. Let's use the light control proportional scale button to click, hold and drag the light to a larger size. When we release the mouse the size is updated. A size of around 55 by 55 looks good. Let's solo the light to make it clearer what we're doing. Again you can reposition the light on the canvas, ideal for small adjustments, or clicking on the render view. Ok that looks good. Let's unsolo and see where we're at. That looks pretty good, but there is a strange thin white line on the front of the bottle, coming from the HDRI map base. Let's get rid of this to complete the lighting. Let's duplicate the softbox light. Right click on the light in the list and select duplicate. Rename the light to blocker. Change the brightness of this light to zero and it will be black. Click on the front of the model in the render view. This black light now covers the content beneath including the area of the HDRI map that was causing the thin white line. Let's click, hold and drag the blocker light down the light list to put it under the backdrop light. The light now appears beneath the backdrop. That light fixed the issue. You can now turn it on and off to see the difference it's making. It looks much better with the fix. To finish the lighting process we need to render a high quality HDRI map file on disk for Blender to use. At the moment we've been sharing a low resolution image to keep things nice and fast. Press the HDR button on the toolbar. Let's change the resolution of the map to 3000 by 1500 in the production render panel. Press the browse button to navigate to the folder where you want to save the HDRI map and give it a file name. We're going to call it Bottle Lighting. Then press Save. Now press Render. An EXR file will be generated and the add-on will then tell Blender now to use this file on disk for the world. Next we should go to the Blender interface and press the Stop button in the HDR Light Studio controls. The Blender scene is now lit with a HDRI map generated by HDR Light Studio and HDR Light Studio is closed. We can now render this bottle at a high resolution in Blender to produce the final result. If you want to make changes to the lighting created with HDR Light Studio, this is easy. Press the start button again to start HDR Light Studio connected with Blender your lighting design will actually automatically load because it has been stored inside your Blender scene file. This means you should save your Blender scene after using HDR Light Studio to make sure the embedded lighting is saved. Now that HDR Light Studio is open, the high res HDRI map is no longer lighting your scene. The live HDR from HDR Light Studio is lighting the scene. So after making your lighting adjustments in HDR Light Studio, you will need to re-render your HDR file again. If you don't render your HDR file and close HDR Light Studio, then a stand-in blue HDR IMAP logo will be used to light your scene. This is to make it obvious that Blender is not using a final HDRI map. We've learnt a lot during this tutorial and I think you now have the skills to explore HDR Light Studio some more. You should be able to light one of your existing Blender scenes using HDR Light Studio and the methods shown here. Happy lighting!